the english east india company provides us with an interesting story of how a group of traders could transform itself into the rulers of the indian subcontinent now the question which obviously arises here is how could they manage to do so we know that the battle of plassey and the battle of buxar gave them control over the territory of bengal and in fact it was this success that encouraged them to continue with their policy of expansion in the rest of the country one method that it took up in order to expand its territories was to fight direct wars with regional kingdoms and annex them into british territories two such kingdoms were mysore and marathas mysore at that time was one of the strongest indian kingdoms under the rule of hyder ali and his son tipu sultan at that time mysore controlled a very prosperous area in the malabar coast which the company used to trade in pepper and cardamom when tipu sultan became the ruler in 1785 he stopped the export of sandalwood pepper and cardamom from this malabar coast he also disallowed the local merchants to trade with the company tipu sultan also went on and established a close relationship with the french and took their assistance in improving his military now we know that the french were the greatest enemies of the british in india that time so naturally the british were furious and they saw hyder ali and tipu sultan as one of their greatest enemies in india that time Thus between 1767 and 1799 four anglo mysore wars were fought between the british and the kingdom of mysore it was in the fourth and the final anglo mysore war fought between 1798 to 1799 that the british gained their victory with the help of nizam of hyderabad in 1799 tipu sultan was killed as he was defending his capital at seringapatam after the defeat of tipu sultan mysore was placed under the heir of the wadeyar family who ruled before hyder ali he was made the ruler of mysore only after he signed the subsidiary alliance with the british the subsidiary alliance was basically an expansionist policy introduced by the british in india we will see what this exactly was soon by the late 18th century the british tried to control the areas under the marathas as well the maratha chiefs at that time were held together in a confederacy under the control of the peshwa or the prime minister of the maratha empire who exercised his influence over the region of pune In the first Anglo-Maratha war between 1775 and 1782 the Marathas defeated the British this was launched against the British by the Marathas mainly because they were really unhappy about the fact that the British were continuously interfering in their internal politics In the second Anglo-Maratha war fought between 1803 to 1806 the british were defeated once again but this time they were able to secure some territories like orissa and territories north of the yamuna river like agra and delhi by signing a peace treaty with the maratha chiefs in the third and final anglo maratha war fought between 1817 and 1818 the british were able to defeat the marathas In this war the Marathas were led by Peshwa Baji Rao the 2nd however Peshwa Baji Rao the 2nd and the Marathas were defeated and the Peshwa was exiled to Bithur which is near today's Kanpur The post of the Peshwa was also abolished by the British and all maratha chiefs were made to sign the subsidiary alliance 
Satara, which was one of the strongest territories held by the Marathas, were now placed under the control of a descendant of Shivaji, who, in fact, was almost under the complete control of the British. So, when did the Third Anglo-Maratha War end? Was it in 1815, 1826, 1832 or 1818? The correct answer is 1818. After fighting a series of wars with Mysore and the Marathas, the British realized that fighting direct wars were costing them heavily. And the British government in England, as well as the board of directors of the English East India Company in India, refused to fund the British army with any more money to fight wars. Thus, what the British did was they adopted a strategical form of expansion. What was this? The British introduced new strategies to conquer the Indian territories without having to fight direct wars with them. One such strategy was the policy of subsidiary alliance which was introduced by Lord Richard Wellesley in the year 1798. Now what was this policy? According to the alliance, the British would give military protection to regional rulers. In return, the regional rulers had to provide the following. They had to accept British overlordship over their territories. The British would be given complete control of the foreign relations of the state. What does this mean? That the ruler of this territory could not fight wars or form an alliance with another state without securing permission from the British. And a British resident would be stationed at the royal court. This was mainly because so that the British could actually oversee what was going on in the ruler's court. Finally, the ruler of the state had to maintain British troops which would be providing this military protection to the regional rulers. So basically, the ruler had to maintain the British troops out of his own pocket to maintain its own security. As it turns out, the Nizam of Hyderabad, Asaf Jah II, was the first Indian ruler to sign the subsidiary alliance with the British in the year 1798. Lord Hastings, who was the Governor General of India between 1813 and 1823 introduced a new policy of expansion called the policy of paramountcy. Under this policy, the company claimed its authority to be paramount or supreme to any other Indian kingdom and the fact that it had the right to annex these kingdoms. Naturally, this policy did not go unchallenged. For example, when the company tried to annex the kingdom of Kittur, which is presently in Karnataka, their leader Rani Chenamma led a struggle against the British in 1824. However, that same year Rani Chenamma was arrested and she died in prison in 1829. Between 1838 and 1842, the British fought a prolonged war with Afghanistan after which it was able to establish an indirect control over this area. In 1843, the company was able to take over the region of Sindh. From 1839, the British fought a prolonged war with the Sikhs as well. And finally, after 10 years, in 1849, they were able to annex the Sikh empire in their territory. Another strategical form of expansion that the British adopted was the policy of doctrine of lapse. This was introduced by Lord Dalhousie in the year 1847. 
this doctrine basically allowed the british to take over territories of the rulers who did not have a natural heir to the throne or who adopted an heir to the throne without securing the british permission in that case the territory controlled by that ruler would come under british control while that adopted heir could only inherit the personal property of the ruler several indian kingdoms like that of jaipur udaipur satara nagpur sambalpur and jhansi came under british control using the doctrine of lapse now in the year 1853 Jhansi was annexed to the British kingdom by the doctrine of lapse however the case of jhansi was a little bit different than the other kingdoms what happened was in 1853 the ruler of jhansi had died without any natural heir the king's wife who is known as rani lakshmi bai of jhansi became the regent they had an adopted heir called anand rao when the british did not accept his demand for inheritance of the kingdom of jhansi Rani Lakshmi Bai launched a war against the British but she was defeated and the kingdom of Jhansi was anyway annexed by the British to their dominion now the question which arises here is that why did indian rulers accept such injustice from the british the reason is that the indian rulers were actually afraid of fighting the british in wars because they knew that they would not be able to defeat the british in a war however the british injustice did not stop there what happened was in 1801 the state of awadh signed the subsidiary alliance with the british where the british promised to never annex the state of awadh if the nawab and his forces helped the british in gaining territories all over india the nawabs from there on did so in fact nawab wajid ali shah was very loyal to the british however in the year 1856 the british broke their promise and they annexed the state of awadh on the pretext of alleged misrule while the company was carrying out its expansionist policies they also introduced a number of administrative and military changes in india warren hastings who was the first governor general of india from 1773 to 1785 introduced a number of administrative changes especially in the sector of judiciary in fact it was in 1772 that the british introduced a new system of justice especially in the districts the district courts were divided into two a criminal court called the fauzdari adalat and a civil court called the diwani adalat the civil courts were presided over by european district collectors who were ek second it ek bar bolche Hindu pandits and Muslim malvis interpreted the Indian laws to European district collectors who presided over the civil courts the criminal courts were presided over by religious heads who were supervised by the European collectors by the regulating act of 1773 a supreme court was established in calcutta also a court of appeal called the sadar nizami adalat was set up in calcutta but the main problem lied in the fact that different hindu brahmins gave different interpretations of indian laws based on different sets of dharma shastras which were hindu law books to solve this problem a committee of 11 hindu pandits were brought together to compile a digest of hindu laws in the year 1775 this digest was later translated into english by n b halhed in 1778 the same was done to compile a digest of islamic laws as well the english east india company brought about a number of changes in the indian military as well see during the 18th century the army used to have two sections to it a cavalry 
where soldiers used to fight on horseback using swords and an infantry or foot soldiers who used various kinds of weapons like swords, bows and arrows, spears, etc. Under the Mughals, the cavalry was more prioritized since it was the permanent section of their army and was regularly maintained. This was because the infantry was provided by the regional zamindas as and when demanded by the Mughal emperors. A change occurred in this pattern when successor states like Awadh began to employ peasants in their army. This system was followed by the British as well who recruited peasants in the infantry forming the Sepoy army. The word Sepoy is basically an anglicized version of the Indian word Sipahi meaning soldier. With the improvement in the military technology after 1820s, the infantry started to gather more power because now they used firearms like muskets which were obviously more powerful than a mere sword. After this, in the early 19th century, a uniform military culture was developed in the British Indian Army. According to this, soldiers were subjected to strict European style of training, drill and discipline. Often what happened in order to maintain professionalism in the army, the British ignored the caste and community feelings of the Indian soldiers. Naturally, the soldiers were a lot disappointed and angry with the British and thus a Sepoy revolt against the British became imminent. It was just a matter of time. Thus, by 1856, using their various expansionist policies, administrative measures and military reforms, the British were able to bring almost the entire India under their control. However, within the next two years, the situation of the English East India Company in India was going to change completely. We will see how this happened soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So, at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So, register for free now.